Hello and welcome to this Uni Taster on demand event today. My name is John Cheek. I'm here from Uni Taster Days, and it's my job to introduce the event and introduce the speaker. The speaker today is Dr. Jess Rollison. Jess is an associate head of school at Upper Life Sciences at Coventry University. She's going to talk about biosciences and link to some of the course options you've got in biosciences and, and ultimately establish which bioscience course is right for you. And with that, I'll pass things straight over to Jess Rollison, joining us from Coventry University. Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Jess Rollison. I'm an assistant professor at Coventry University and my subject's expertise is microbiology. And what I really want to talk to you about today is which bioscience course is best for me. There's lots of different biology based courses out there and sometimes it's a little bit of a hard decision for you to be able to make. So let's, let's see how I can help you along the way. So today I'm going to give you an overview of three different types of courses. Um, and all of these courses, they have a bioscience based focus around them. The first one I'm going to talk about is going to be biomedical science. And the second courses I'm going to talk about are human biosciences and human biology based degrees. And then the third course will be a more niche course. And this is pharmacology. And there's many similarities between the courses and also some differences that I'd like to highlight to you. But I'd like to give you an overview of what to expect from each of these courses, what career pathways you might want to go into, and maybe some application tips at the end uh, to get your course applications along the way. So all of the courses that I'm going to be talking to you about today have a bioscience or a human biology aspect underpinning them. They'll all have a theory aspect based alongside a practical teaching aspect as well, because we're actually developing you as a scientist to give you that practical expertise. Some of these courses might offer an applied experience. So you'll be able to go and apply for placements, whether that's at the university or whether that's at a hospital or an industrial based placement. You'll also be able to develop your research methods. The teaching staff on all bioscience courses will have some research expertise behind them as well. So alongside that research expertise, they will also be able to offer you some applied experience or some really useful vital connections. So the first course I'm going to talk about is BSc in Biomedical Science. Now, these courses, they have a very clear focus on diagnosis and treatment of disease. And underpinning these courses, the main study themes are usually human physiology, biochemistry, where you're studying analytes within the blood or the chemistry within the human body, microbiology, so the study of bacteria and viruses and fungi and parasites, cell biology, molecular biology and DNA, genetics and immunology. So it's a broad range degree, but it gives you that diagnosis of disease and the treatment of disease focus. Because a biomedical scientist is somebody who will study and they will analyze uh, blood samples, urine samples, bodily fluid samples to determine what's causing a disease and to inform treatment options. So my key tip here, if you're looking to become a biomedical scientist, or you might want to be a biomedical scientist, then you really need to look for an IBMS accredited degree. To be able to become an IBM, to be able to become a biomedical scientist, you need to have an IBMS accredited degree. And that will then prepare you for a career as a biomedical scientist. And that's really, really important. It might be that you're not sure. And if you're not sure whether you do want to be a biomedical scientist, this also gives you that broad expertise in human biology and biosciences as well. So it gives you that option to go along that career pathway if you wish. The other thing that you need if you want to become a biomedical scientist is at some point in your career, you need to undertake a professional training year. Now, some universities will offer this training year as part of a placement year. And if you complete your competence registration portfolio on your placement year or upon graduation in your 
first year of working, then you are then able to apply for HCPC registration. That's the Health and Care Professions Council. If you do undertake a placement where you can complete the competence registration portfolio uh, before graduation, then your course should become HCPC approved. For those, those are the two things that you really need to look out for with a course is that it's IBMS accredited and that you've got the opportunity to go on a placement where you can undertake your professional training year. If you're interested in more broadly human biosciences and human biology, and you don't particularly want to be a biomedical scientist, but you would like to go into a human biology based role, then these types of degrees are probably more suitable to you. So human biosciences and human biology encompass the same sorts of themes, but they have more of a human health and disease focus. And again, that can include human physiology, human biology, biochemistry, microbiology, cell and molecular biology, genetics, genomics, and immunology. And also look out for those courses that are accredited, such as accreditation with the Royal Society of Biology. Now, depending upon the institution that you're applying for, they might have a particular focus. So you might be able to undertake different modules um, and choose a speciality. And that very much um, depends upon the expertise that they have in-house at that university. So that might be specialisms in such as cancer biology, genetics, biochemistry, physiology or microbiology. So that's something to look out for when you're applying for um, an institution to have a look at what those optional modules might actually be. Now you might come across more niche courses such as pharmacology. So if you're interested in the modes of actions of drugs and how those drugs can affect our, our body and our systems, then a pharmacology based course may be for you. So a pharmacology course will encompass lots of different uh, biosciences within there, including human physiology, health and disease, cell and molecular biology, biochemistry and microbiology. But there'll be a strong focus on pharmacology and also clinical trials. Now, these courses have been designed to focus on the needs of the pharmaceutical industry. And this is what we call translational medicine taking the idea of a drug from the research bench all the way to the treatment at the bedside. And this is a very expensive process with clinical trials, um, lots of uh, different research groups. It actually takes up to 15 years to develop a drug from bench to bedside. So this is why the pharmaceutical industry are so interested in graduates that have this understanding of the pro process. Okay? So it's really about human physiology, pharmacology, drug discovery and development, applying pharmacology and physiology to diagnosis and treatment. So if you have that interest in pharmacology, then these types of degrees are really great for you. So what about careers? Because that's where you want to be at the end of the day, in a career that you love and that you're passionate about. And all of these courses that I've gone through in the past couple of slides, they all have career pathways that are common to all. So with all of those types of courses, you can go into laboratory roles, in analytical industries or pharmaceutical industries. You might be looking to go into research, you might be looking to develop in your uh, studying, such as with an MSc or a PhD, or you might even want to apply for postgraduate medicine or go into lecturing in further education and higher education, such as myself. I was a microbiologist. I undertook my PhD and now I'm actually a researcher and a, a higher education, higher education lecturer. Because you're studying a science, 
doesn't mean that you have to go into a laboratory role. There's plenty of non-laboratory roles out there that these degrees are also suitable to, such as field and conservation work, uh, pharmaceutical reps, journalism, teaching, or even working within the media. And science courses are also very, very valuable. You might actually go into a non-science-based um, career. So the civil service, management, patent office, there's lots of companies out there that look for science graduates because of those translational skills that you've actually got. Your independent working skills, your data analysis skills, all of those are so useful to so many different non-science based careers. So you're really opening up a lot of doors with these types of courses. So I want to talk to you about the key differences between the courses and to just give you an overview again about what to look for when you're deciding what degree you're going to study. So with biomedical science, the key thing is to look for IBMS accreditation because that's what's needed to become a biomedical scientist. Look for those IBMS accredited degrees, because if you don't get an IBMS accredited degree, then you'll, you'll probably have to do some top up courses later on. If you're interested in a more broad range biology based degree, then human bioscience or human biology based degrees are probably best for you. Often they've got optional modules and specialisms such as genetics or cancer biology, but that depends upon the in-house expertise of the university. So do make sure you go in and have a look at the module content of those courses on their web pages. There are also specialist degrees out there such as pharmacology. Pharmacology is very focused on the needs of the pharmaceutical industry. So that's for graduates that want to have that understanding of the drug development process and those that might want to go into the pharmaceutical industry, perhaps working in clinical trials or research. So if you're looking to apply for a course, here are some of my top tips. And I have been there as well. Many years ago, myself, when I was looking for universities, uh, when I just started to undertake my A-levels, visit lots of universities, get a feel for the area, the staff and the students. It become very apparent to you what type of university you want to be at. You'll get a really good feel by going to visit. Consider whether you want to travel or whether you want to live on site on the university campus. That's going to inform your decisions. Ask lots of questions. If you're going on a university open day, ask questions. The staff are there. They want to talk to you. Um, get as much knowledge as you possibly can to help you make your decision. Look for course accreditations. If you want to go into biomedical science, then that course accreditation is really important. Consider how you're going to be taught and assessed. Different people have different learning styles. Would you prefer a course that has more exams or would you prefer a course that has more practical based coursework? Would you prefer a course that's online or would you prefer a course that has more face to face teaching? All of these questions are really important. What about the numbers of days to teach them, the number of contact hours? Many different uh, universities have different contact hours. Some universities, there's lots of contact hours with the lecturer. Some universities, they're less. So that really depends upon your own needs. Are there any course related benefits? Do you have any laboratory equipment that you're given, such as a, a laboratory coat? Do you have any books that you're given upon um, enrolment into that university course? Are my modules shared with other courses? What you'll find is that some courses share common first years. Now, that's actually quite a benefit. If you're going on to a course that has a shared common first year, that often means that at the end of your first year, you might have the option to switch courses if you so desire after that first year of study. What academic student support is available? Are there student reps? 
Do I have a tutor? Is there any other support that's there to help me? This is a big transition for you going from A-level or B-tech or access course into a university setting. This might be one of your first times away from being at home from your family. It's a huge step to take. Is there a chance to study abroad or travel abroad on field trips? And what other opportunities are there to gain that experience to give me an advantage on my CV? So are there placements integrated into the course? What are the, the links to industries and schools and hospital laboratories and research laboratories? Have a look at the staff. What are their research interests? What are their publications? What about student welfare and disabilities? What support does the student have that the, the university have there? And are there any extra things that I will have to pay for? And alongside of that, what career support is provided? Many universities have bespoke career support to help you with your CVs and to help you with your job applications. Are there any scholarships? Are scholarships available to you? And how can you apply for those? Some other application tips. Check the entry criteria. Make sure that what you're studying at the moment enables you to apply for those courses? What grades do you need to be able to apply for those courses? For your personal statements, you need to show a passion for your area. How did you become interested in it? Why do you love that subject? What elements of your A-levels or your B-techs are you really enjoying? Look at the subject areas of the degree course you want to study. Go and have a look at the modules online. What are you studying at the moment that actually relates to those modules? Are you involved in any bioscience societies or any biosciences activities? Do you have any work experience or volunteering experience? Have you had any volunteering experience in a care home? Do you have a part-time job? And what would you like to do as a career? Why do you want to study this course? How is it going to actually enable you to get to the career that you want to be on when you finish and you graduate from university? Thank you for listening. I'd like to wish you the best of luck with your journey. As long as you choose a course that you're passionate about, I'm sure you will succeed.